I have so much fun creating my own background papers. I've created a complete coordinating collection of papers here and you can do this too. I'm going to show you the techniques using your stamps, your embossing folders, your ink pads, all the things you've already got laying around in your craft room. Now you can use any colours you like but I've used a brown and a blue here to keep everything coordinated. I'd love to know in the comments which colours you are going to use for these techniques. So for all these papers I'm going to stick with the same two colours. I've got tea dye and Uncharted Mariner in the Distress Ink and Oxide range. Um, I do have inks as well but I'll be mainly focusing on the oxides just because I like to keep this as simple as possible for you. Now the first technique is actually creating either double sided paper or you can do both techniques at the same time and then decide which you prefer and it's with an embossing folder. Now I'm not, not actually going to be running this through um, an embossing folder machine, so a die cutting machine, but instead I'm going to just be using my hands as pressure and we're going to be kind of creating like a stamp with this instead. So I'm going to cover the entire surface of the embossing folder on both sides with both colours. So I'm picking out the detail in one side and I'm kind of covering the background in the other. So you want to, you don't worry about mixing your inks, it'll be absolutely fine. And you may find, like I say, you may find that you prefer one of the transfers to the other. Now, you can do sweeping motion, you can do a blotting motion. Sometimes you find with a blotting motion, though, you actually get squares in it. You might like that effect. And then I'm going to pick out detail on here that I don't already have with the previous colour. Now, the blue is going to overpower the tea dye quite a lot, but that's fine. And I'm going to take a water spritz and just do a very light mist over everything. Just place my paper inside and I'm just going to press down. So I'm not actually creating an emboss. The idea is today here that we are creating patterned papers that you can cut up, you can die cut, you can stick in your journals, you can create card backgrounds with. So I don't actually want to have the emboss with these. So the first one is going to be subtle. Look at that, isn't that just beautiful? You've just got a really lovely impression there. Now, if you want to go a step further, you can miss this more, and this will give you a little bit of wicking and bleeding along the color. Then on the other side, look how beautiful that is. It's absolutely stunning. Again, if you want to spritz this, you can, but it's up to you which side you then prefer to use. What you'll find is the more water you use, the more transfer you're going to get. So let's just add some more water to this and go again. Before you clean up your embossing folder, I'd always say, see how much you can get out of it first. So let's press down once more. This time with a lot more water, we've got a lot more color there. Isn't that just absolutely beautiful? And then the other side, we've got a much paler image but still equally as gorgeous. So, so far we've created four pattern papers straight away, gorgeous colours that will just all work together. Now I'm just going to clean this up with a wet wipe and then dry it off and set it aside. Make sure it's fully dry before you close it and put it back into storage. Oh, those two are definitely my favourite two of each sheet. Now for this next technique, I am going to get my gel plate out, but if you don't have a gel plate or a media plate, what you can also use alternatively is something like a silicon mat. If you've got a silicon mat, maybe you've got one for baking or something like that, you can still easily transfer things like ink and paint and such, so definitely have a go with that instead. So I'm just going to add some paint, or rather, sorry, some ink, I'm so used to putting paint on my gel plate, onto here. My gel plate is not sticking on the mat at the moment, but it's fine. We're only going to be doing messy things with it. We're not doing anything too precise. Now, usually I'd go in with a brayer and I would kind of smooth all that out, but I'm not going to this time because I quite like the squares on there that the ink pad's left. So I'm just going to give this a mist with water, just like so. And you can see those colours have become really vibrant already. And I'm just going to pick that up. Look at that. Isn't that just absolutely beautiful? Absolutely stunning. Now, of course, you can go again. I've still got lots of ink on there and I can press this in a second time. 
and lift it up and I can keep doing that and doing that until I've got no more ink left on my plate. So the next background is using a stencil and again you can get two backgrounds from one stencil. So I'm going to ink all the way over this one, uh, mostly with one colour, the blue, but I will leave some spaces to put some of the tea dye colour, the brown in as well. Now I'm going over with a really big blending brush. This is going to help me later because it's applying lots of ink to the background of the stencil, the, the negative part that's not going to be used. And you can go with um, dark and light shades of this as well, so applying more in some areas than others. And then I'm filling in all the gaps with the tea dye colour where needed. I really love that these two colours together kind of make a bit of a vintage green as well. So straight away, really easy, we've got a lovely background. But on your stencil, you've then got lots of ink, so make sure you spritz that and then press that into another piece of paper to see what sort of print that you get. Once you lift it up, you should be left with a beautiful negative effect from the first image. Much paler, of course, because we watered it down, but it still looks stunning. Now creating wood grain effect cardstock or paper is really easy with distress inks and oxide pads. You can do this with other ink pads as well but I really love how quick and easy it is with these ones because of the width of the pad. So I'm just going to drag this down using uh, the, full, the full sort of surface of the ink pad there starting from over the edge and overlapping and you can see already we've got a beautiful wood grain now we can leave it like that or if you really want to coordinate we can take the previous color so the tea dye that we've also been using and put the two together layering them one on top of the other don't worry about contaminating your ink pad surface either um, you may have seen a few times where i've got blue on here i would just rub that off onto a piece of white paper or use my blending brush to take that off so there again, we've then got a wood grain effect paper to add to our stash with all of our other pattern papers created so far. So the next technique I always find is easier to do on a larger piece of cardstock and then cut out the bit that you prefer, the detail that you like best, because it does have unpredictable results, as do many of these techniques. But all we're going to do is scrunch up this paper and we're going to make sure we've got lots and lots of crinkles in it Try to do it without actually tearing the paper as well. And then once you think you've crinkled that up enough, just kind of loosely flatten it out. We don't want to completely flatten it at this stage. And then we're going to take our ink pads and we're just going to pick up the surface crinkles on here. So I'm going to do some of the deeper ones with the blue. So I'm just going to brush this over quite lightly at this stage. And see all that gorgeous texture it's picking out and then I'm going to go in with the tea dye being the slightly lighter colour and I'm going to press a little bit harder with this one it doesn't matter so much if this one gets in the background because it is the lighter colour and you kind of get a feel for how much pressure you can actually put down make sure you're always using the flat surface of the um, ink pad and not the edge, otherwise you are going to ca capture the background. Now, once that has all been completely inked, you can place another piece of paper on top just to save your fingers or let it thoroughly dry and then flatten it down again. A really good way of flattening it as well if you want to is pop it through your die cutting machine with a couple of rubber mats just to squeeze it through the plates. There we go, now I've got a flat piece of gorgeous textured paper. Now this time we're going to create a butterfly backing paper but we're going to cre create this gorgeous ombre look to it. So pick one of your colours, it doesn't matter which one, uh, which of one you'd like because you can try it with both. And we're going to ink the butterfly stamp. Now this doesn't of course have to be a butterfly. This could be a flower, a leaf, just an ink splodge or something. And we're going to stamp it once, then we're going to stamp it again and then we're going to stamp it again and we're going to work our way up and as you can see you get kind of uh, three different colours so we get the first impression, second impression and the third impression and these are also known as generation stamps then we're going to do the same again near the bottom some of the way up and then further up the top 
and we're going to keep repeating this moving the butterfly around So once you've filled your background, you've got a really fun backing paper. If you find you've got a couple of areas where the ink was a little bit dark at the top and you want that faded out ombre look, just give it a little spritz of water. This is perfect if you have used um, distress inks or distress oxides because, of course, they do uh, lift up a little bit so they react with the water and you can lift that deeper, darker colour up and that will just fade those out. So once that's dry, that will be much lighter at the top and of course you've got it dark at the bottom and again you can even emphasize that by ink blending up the bottom a little bit with a little bit of the same blue color repeat this for your brown as well or whatever your second color is you may be creating these papers with three colors even make sure you've got one of each so you've got a complete array of different pattern papers to use so now I have a complete collection of coordinating pattern papers that I can use on my cards, my journals, my scrapbook pages. You can do this with any colours, you can do it with lots of different inks as well. You could try it with things like watercolour paint too. I'd love to know in the comments which one of these are your favourite techniques and what colours you will be using to create your own DIY patterned papers. If you enjoy videos like this, please do subscribe to my channel and I hope you'll join me for another one of my videos. This one here might be of interest to you. Take care, everybody. See you again very soon.